everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are very excited today to be back having another episode of the On Friendship series that we do. And we look at a Hallmark movie from a perspective of relationships and friendship. It's a lot of fun. And I'm always excited to have my friend, Elise, <laughs> Lisa with us, Lisa Lucas with us. And thank you so much, Lisa, for coming on and talking with us about Harvest Moon. Yes. Let's get in the fall spirit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pumpkin everything. Let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We got the, um, the big lifetime announcement, their Christmas slate Ooh. today. So I've been in Christmas mode all day. Uh, but now I got to get in my fall harvest mode. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Can you put a pause on Christmas? Because we have some pumpkins to talk about here today. <laughs> so how have you been? You doing well? I'm tired. But you I'm know. sitting here in my pajamas, like cozy bathrobe, a cozy blanket. <laughs> like I'm ready for fall. <laughs> For sure. So it was <laughs> nice. a nice break to be able to watch the movie with all the other things I have to do. It's a busy semester for me. So you this get is your a nice pumpkin, break. Your pumpkin spice. See, and... I'm not a, like a pumpkin spice latte person, but I do like <laughs> pumpkin flavor. And I just like my Halloween and fall decorations have been up since August 5th. So <laughs> I'm just like all in on the spook and the fall. And I got part of my Halloween costume mm-hmm. in the mail today. Ooh. So I'm excited. Yeah, I got to test out my Halloween costume because we had Fanex here. It's our local con, our local yes. Comic Con. And uh, so I was, my costume this year is uh, I'm Wanda from WandaVision. Yay! Um, everyone fun. else is gonna have to wait until Halloween to do my <laughs> costume. Sorry. <laughs> Keep an eye on my Twitter. <laughs> well, it, I'm excited to talk about Harvest Moon. This is one of my favorite fall harvest movies. I really enjoy it, and uh, so I'm interested to see what you think of it. Yes. And the summary is after her family goes bankrupt, a city woman travels to the country to fix up a struggling pumpkin farm that her father bought as an investment. Mm -hmm. So overall, what was your overall kind of feeling of this movie? At first I was like, when did this movie come out? Because it reminds me of Schitt's Creek's like Mm -hmm. essential storyline, like the the family loses their money, but the dad That's has true. bought this hotel. So at first I thought it was going to be sort of like, ew, David. You know, like, <laughs> and I guess she, you know, so that was my first thought. I was like, wait, what is happening? What, am I on Netflix still? What's happening? Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, beyond that, I mean, you know, it's still an interesting story where you have like this person coming in and she doesn't really have much left. And so... <laughs> what, what is she going to do? And these folks are putting everything into this farm that they have and they don't have enough, you know? And so mm-hmm. she's out of everything. They don't have enough. So how are they going to make it work? And so I did enjoy yeah. that. I enjoyed sort of like the collective unit of people um, mm-hmm. in in the show. Um, although I, I'm, I'm assuming we're supposed to focus on the, the main two, but I liked the whole sort mm-hmm. of collective that she came in and and maybe it wasn't so welcomed but then was welcomed yeah. i don't know spoiler alert yeah. we'll talk about it <laughs> yeah no the supporting characters i think are real strong in this and add a lot to it and i, mean, I think this one with a, a few little uh sanding off you know the edges i think it could be a feature film with reese witherspoon i mean i don't yeah. think it's that different than than what you might see in sweet home alabama or mm-hmm. Uh, this means this. war you know any of those mm-hmm. kinds of, yeah absolutely and and that's one of the things is sometimes when i watch the movies not having grown up watching hallmark per se um and that i i save all my hallmark and all these kinds of movies for this podcast <laughs> um or hanging out with my mom mm-hmm. and i have to say like sometimes i'm like like i really like the story but then there'll be like something else i just kind of like you know, maybe that was a budget issue or you know, something <laughs> like that. But like, you know, you have the city girl coming into the country and like, I, I believed her as a city girl, but the folks that were supposed to have been in the country, I was like, you seem a little too polished for what I might assume to be mm. living on a farm. But I still liked it. That was the only thing yeah. I was like, what was the lead character's name? Derek Jarrett. That was his name. 
He was a little too clean cut for a farmer, in my opinion. Mm, Brett. His name was Brett, Brett Jarrett. Where am I getting Derek from? <laughs> what? Get it together, Elisa. Well, the last name was Jarrett. The one that I struggled with is the brother. I couldn't tell if his name was Harry or Perry. <laughs> and I was like, what? And then I'd listen, and I'm like, I still can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Finally, it is Harry is correct, yes. according to IMDb. So. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we were just both uh, just had a moment during this where it's like, what are people's names? <laughs> we'll just well, make usually up our I'm just, own names. <laughs> usually I'm just like the actor's names. I don't worry about oh, the names of yeah. the characters. But you can't do that here because both of the leads are named Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jesse Schramm and Jesse Hutch are both. Okay. Their- yeah, so we have to go character. So <laughs> you he have to was... know the character. Jenny Wait. and Brett. Brett. Okay, the I already forgot names. his name after the whole Harry Perry situation. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what's his name again? <laughs> Brett. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Brett was a little too clean cut for like I, I wanted a little bit more um uh, I don't know, rough and tumble. Mm, I don't know. I can I can see what you mean. But other um, than that, but, really enjoyed. <laughs> yeah. But I think that it, it's a tricky thing when you have a character like Jesse Schramm's character, Jenny. When you have a character like Jenny, it, it's, it's tricky to keep her likable because yeah. she is so privileged, right? Yeah. And, and so you have to kind of do what alicia silverstone does and clueless or reese witherspoon and legally blonde or kind of these you have to bring in sort of the heart yeah and i i think that jesse successfully does that i think that she makes her character you know likable absolutely the only time that i didn't like her was like the opening scenes sort of situation where it was just mm-hmm. like what my cards do like i don't know and and i think like for that, it's maybe, how do you say this, where it's like, as soon as she kind of got beyond the first sort of spill into the mud on the farm, and she goes and she's she's there and working on the farm, I feel like she just needs something to do. Like, she has great ideas, and she is thoughtful about things, but that maybe sometimes, well, at least in her case, it sort of feels like, she has this privilege and she just doesn't do anything with it. Whereas like what you're talking about, like with clueless, like even though she might be a little bit more self-centered, for example, she still is always kind of thinking about other people's relationships. So Alicia Silverstone is share. And then in legally blonde, she puts it all into her sorority and that sort of thing. It just seemed like she didn't really have anything other than shopping. And maybe that's, sort of what we're supposed yeah. to gather and we're supposed to learn more about her. I think but- they try to throw in, well, I'm a fashion blogger and oh. you know, that kind of thing. But, but yeah, no, I think that's fair. I mean, it's, it's always a tricky balance between you want to keep your characters likable, like Cher in Clueless yeah. and not like Regina George. And of course <laughs> in Mean Girls, she's supposed to be the villain, but like you have to keep your, your character from being a you know a mean girl if it's one of these sort of popular characters and it's tricky to do and i think a lot of it comes down to the actresses themselves yeah and whether they can uh they can kind of pull that off and and uh yeah i I, she is she's kind of a lot at the beginning she's like uh she's i don't do carbs (laughs) 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 <laughs> well, the other thing is, like, yeah, her in the coffee shop, everyone was like, what is happening? And I was like, who wears a skirt? Like, you can wear whatever you want to wear, you know, first off. But, like, there is, like, you know, dressing for the weather. Yeah. I mean, not that I did that when I was 21 and would go to the, you know, clubs or whatever. It's like, I wouldn't wear a jacket because I didn't want to get that smoke you know, smell on it or whatever, but you usually dress for weather. You dress for the location and the dress, the skirt she had on is one of those like hard to maneuver. Ones pencil. Because, yeah. Pencil yeah, skirt. Pencil skirt. And I was like, no, yeah, you I mean, are it, going it really, to fall hard. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to wear a $2,000 outfit to go look at a farm. It's that's very true. 
Yeah. She Man. probably thought she would just look at it from, you know, the sidewalk. Like, there'd be sidewalks <laughs> on this farm, and it would be fine. It'd be like window shopping, if you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And I I think that the fact that she she is she's lost her mother and and when uh, the Lila Fitzgerald or the little girl she says oh, my mom's in heaven and you see yeah. her response I think that that helps a lot in kind of warming up to the character mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's just whenever you can get that kind of kindness you know and yeah. and, and, and I think it helps a lot and we love Lila. She's just a remarkable young lady. Yeah. She uh, she has been on the podcast a number of times. Yay! Uh, yeah. <laughs> now she is a, I forget how old she is, 17, 8, something like that. Anyway, but she is an incredible dancer. She's actually yeah. a ballerina. Yeah. Nice. I know. And somehow she's managing to keep acting in various roles while also uh, becoming a, a ballerina. So it's, it's amazing. Yeah. She's, she's great. And I think she's really cute in this yes. movie. Yes. I, mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out how old she was supposed to be, but I don't yeah. have kids and I'm not around kids a lot. So, you know, it's kind of like with babies, like, I don't know what end is up. I don't know how to hold them. So like trying to judge age here, I was like, she like seven is she eight like i wasn't i had no idea how old she was i knew that she was not a teenager but i could not figure out how old she was but again that mm-hmm. might just be the fact that i have zero knowledge of those under the age of 18 <laughs> yeah so she's 18 now now but yes how old was she now then? so this movie, movie <laughs> this movie was made in 2015 oh yeah, so she I was think... like 10 or 11 okay yeah yeah Okay. So, Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and his name was Brett and his uh, and the brother was Harry. Okay. We got all the, all the information is cleared yeah. up. <laughs> yes. And I do think that the two Jessies have nice chemistry together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, that's the thing is like, you know, other than the opening scene and then maybe the mud scene, I, I liked her. Um, I didn't like that he was like, let's get her out of here. But I can imagine it's got to be really hard when you have been working on this farm and someone who owns it just doesn't ever do anything. So you're running it yourself. Mm -hmm. But now they don't have anything but the farm. And so, you know, there's going to be some tension there. But I didn't like that he was trying to purposefully get rid of her. But of course, before he could do that, she charmed him anyways. And I thought, Mm -hmm. and the thing about it was like, I didn't think that there was a whole lot of romance per se in this movie. There were moments, there was like Mm -hmm. a raining moment and yeah, I love that moment. But like at the end of the movie and she's like to my, you know, to like my best friend and you know, that sort of, I don't know. I just, I just kind of liked that, you know, there, there was, they developed respect for each other, but it, it wasn't always necessarily romantic and i of course Mm -hmm. as someone who focuses on friendship in my research and in my podcast like of course i was like yes let's keep it platonic but then of course i had to kiss in the rain or whatever (laughs) but i was like that's fine you can have it (laughs) but there are quite a few examples of friendship in this film you have Mm -hmm. her friend brooke oh goodness (laughs) who, (laughs) who i i think again could be a mean girl but she i think shows herself to be an actual like caring friend enough you know especially by the end yeah i i I thought she was fun yeah i i think the beginning it, it has to be hard when you live life a certain way and then something completely changes for a friend that stays the same for you and so mm-hmm. in this case like the lead she loses the family loses everything essentially except for this farm and so her credit cards are all declined so they're and she even declares that her friend is the one that outspends her and outshops her and that sort of thing and and i think whether it's about someone loses money or loses a job and you still work for the company or, you know, kind of like someone stays in school and someone transfers, like there's gotta be some awkwardness that probably happens in that transition. So I don't think she's a very good friend 
when she calls and she's like, she doesn't know really what to do because her friend doesn't have that money anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how are we going to be, she doesn't know how to foresee it yet. Like she can't see what the the friendship is going to be like. Mm -hmm. And it's like, she doesn't know what to do. So at the beginning, it's kind of like this awkward thing. But yeah, by the end, I think she she kind of figures out what what that's going to mm-hmm. look like. And I think yeah. that would happen in a lot of different transitions, right? You know, I thinking about I teach college students and several of my college students are going to graduate in December, right? And so they might have their best friends, their romantic partners, and they all attend the same school And then they're going to graduate. Some might go back home as they look for jobs. Some people might go right to graduate school. Some might take a semester off. Some might go into jobs. And even in those situations, you're going to have some growing pains in those transitions. So I did like that about their friendship, you know, showing this sort of realistic, like, even if you like ultimately figure out how to continue being friends, that it can be weird for a while because you're so used to the friendship being a certain way. Mm -hmm. Drinking the champagne and <laughs> shopping and spending money and getting yeah. spa days and stuff like that. And then now it's like, wait, well, what are we going to do now? And, you know, she offers like, I'll cover you. We'll go have a day. And she's like, no, you know, you know, so yeah. it's like she, she doesn't quite know what to do, but they end up figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. And she says, I don't think this problem can get solved with a makeover. Yeah. And then ding, ding, ding going. I'm going to give the pumpkin farm a makeover. <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) That was cute. But I also love like her immediate makeover was their house. (laughs) Right. So so (laughs) you have this, you know, you have Brett, Derek or Jared or whatever his name is. Brett. (laughs) His daughter, who is the amazing ballerina in real life. And you Mm -hmm. have the brother, Harry Perry. And then you have Aunt (laughs) Is it Aunt Rosie? Aunt Rosie. And then yeah. you have some like farm hands that are they're ma- that are married and that sort of so you have this group of people and you have a farm and it's about pumpkins. And then there seems to be some other things like flowers and other things that we discover. But when she comes in to do the makeover, she brings in things to bake over their house. And I'm like, that's mm-hmm. not quite the farm, but Okay. I mean, I got the impression that it's, it's almost, it was almost sort of like staging, kind of. Yeah, you know, but it was still gonna... funny. I'm going to go, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go make over <laughs> the farm. And then it's like, but let's start on the inside of their house. So the first thing <laughs> I need to do is set your kitchen right, y'all, because y'all don't know what's going on in the kitchen. Yeah. When really, I mean, what that does, it leads her to figure out more about them and sort of like, this flower situation that I'm sure we'll get into and the pump pumpkin cream, which I'm sure we'll get into. Uh So maybe she did need to start in the house to truly get to know them. And in some instances, as you're saying that, you know, she has to sort of not be the mean girl sort of situation that this allows her to get to know them and sort of Uh charm them with her other natural communicative abilities and, and and that sort of thing. Uh And so yeah, well, she and, had to start in the house. <laughs> and they're all pretty judgmental of her. Yes. Uh, maybe except for Abby, the little girl. Yeah. Similar to uh, <laughs> do Legally Blonde, uh, you know, where the other students and things, they uh, they immediately judge Elle as being yeah. stupid or as being not, oh, yeah. you know, somebody they want to work with, different things like that. Uh, when, you know, they don't even if they just gave her a chance, she'd see that she's, you know, a nice person and yeah, at least appreciate that, you know, she's trying. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think that that makes the characters a little bit interesting because you want flawed characters that grow and change. Yeah. Uh, and it's hard to do in this format because you only have so much time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for this type of, movie i think they do a pretty good job and i really like uh aunt rosie played by barbara pollard i think that she Mm -hmm. is is a really nice addition to this group very sweet very uh uh she i feel like she's empathetic of both Mm -hmm. of both brett and jenny and what they're going through 
And when she finally gives Jenny some some boots. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he starts her off pretty rough. Uh, and yeah. He has her checking the pumpkins and she gets all wet and everything like that. And I'm like, why step away from the water? Why are you? <laughs> well, he not only has her check the irrigation system, if I'm pronouncing that mm-hmm. correctly. And one of the farmhand people is like, but we have a system, an alarm system that we put in. And he's like, I know. And then he makes her count the pumpkins and Aunt Rosie's like, we don't do that. Or, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. so he's trying to figure out ways that, that thinking that someone from the city who would have a $2,000 outfit is not going to be able to handle hard work, um, is not going to be able to, and, and she gets right in there. And one of the parts I love is I don't remember what she's trying to do per se, but like she has a selfie stick because yeah, she's a fashion blogger or mm-hmm. whatever she said she was, but she uses the selfie stick to move some stuff around or whatever. And I was like, see, work hard, work smarter, <laughs> not harder. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I don't know if you ever saw this show. Eight is enough. Did you ever watch that show? Oh gosh. If I did it, I mean, I was what, like a little I was yeah. younger than Abby, you know, yeah. so, but yeah, but, but I'm sure her dad, people who are listening have, have seen it. So tell us I mean, the, the example. I didn't watch it when it aired. I watched it yeah. on TV land, but oh, no, I didn't do that. her, <laughs> her dad is played by one of the, by Willie Ames, who was on Eight is Enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know what I thought of? You're going to Eight is Enough. I was like, Charles in charge of the days. And he's Buddy from Charles in Charge. Mm-hmm. So that's so, what I remember. That's yeah. that is more of my. We're similar in age, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you ever watch Charles in Charge? I never have watched Charles and Charles. Really? Charles in Charge. I know. <laughs> okay, so that's why you're going. This is why it's good to have both of us here because you can cover the eight is enough crowd. I got the Charles in Charge crowd. And we're all good. But yeah, Willie, I noticed that and I started singing the theme song. I was like, Charles and Charles. (laughs) We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode. And that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. I, and what did you, so what did you think of Phil and, and Lou, the couple that work at the, uh, thought, at the farm? I thought they could have been integrated a little bit more. I think mm-hmm. that, that Lou becomes more connected to Jenny in the sense that it seems like she needs some assistance and, and maybe she wants to be more, and she doesn't want to be that farmhand 24 seven, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, like I she think- wants to take care of herself or do something a little bit more feminine, if you will. And she just doesn't know a lot about it. Yeah. So- I think she lacks some confidence. I think she's a little insecure. Yeah. And I think that, uh, that Jenny kind of gives her that boost. It kind of reminds me since you brought up Legally Blonde, it kind of reminds me of like how Elle might help someone mm-hmm. else. So like Jennifer Coolidge's character. Yeah. And also mm-hmm. I was thinking later, um, her ex-boyfriend's new fiance, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Selma Blair's character. Right. So, so it's one of those things that like Elle is pretty confident and so is Jenny. And so I think sometimes it's just, it can be nice to be around people like that because mm-hmm. it's almost like it's contagious in some ways or mm-hmm. that they might see you in a way that you don't see yourself. And so they can communicate in a way. And I think I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because now that we're talking about it, that is a connection that you'll also see in Clueless 
with um, Ty's character. Mm-hmm. And that that is a way in which to be become friends, right? Mm-hmm. And to really help each other out, right? Like, so, you know, Lou might offer something to Jenny that Jenny might not have, like help around the farm, for example. Yeah. And that, you know, maybe she's lacking that confidence. Or as I said, like, she wants maybe to, like, they have that event in town and she kind of wants to go... A little, look a little different like get dry, get gussied up you know mm-hmm. <laughs> and and you know that's something that Jenny is good at and and I think that just goes to show that also you can have friends that are not precisely similar you don't have to be the exact same right that's true and, that's a good point and that and that you can help you help each other out in different mm-hmm. ways and so I think sometimes we see that like that might be like, they might not want to be forced together. Like I'm thinking of teen movies, like people are forced mm-hmm. together in some way, but a lot of times they learn from each other um, and they can, they can both benefit each other in other ways and they can bond in that sense mm-hmm. and get to know each other. And so, so I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I don't know that I fully picked up on that until I started talking. And then I was like, yeah, the way this is a great <laughs> friendship. Jenny is able to, con- I think what makes Jenny cool and sorry, Brett, Derek, or whatever your name is, but <laughs> to me, I think that Jenny really stands out in this mm-hmm. movie over him. And yeah. maybe it's her story versus like, and he's a part of it, but you know, like maybe we're seeing her, her story, her, her mm-hmm. as the starring person, right. And her life, right. That her family's lost everything. She's been, privileged and you know she hasn't maybe applied herself in some ways and that this thing comes up and it's a way for her to figure out herself but one of the things I think we learn about Jenny is that she has a skill that is absolutely necessary I think to communicate effectively and that's the ability to connect with anyone Uh she connects with Abby she connects with Harry Perry connects with Lou Aunt Rosie Derek yeah nope and I think it's because she's not yeah I I think it's because she isn't judgmental exactly she's very open yeah she's open to people she's positive and she just she she doesn't judge Brooke she doesn't judge uh people that if you're like her or not like her you know she she keeps an open mind and i mean one of the things i liked about phil and lou is that i can imagine that as a married couple that you can kind of get in a bit of a rut sometimes oh yeah just you get so used to the your partner that you kind of start to take them for granted a little bit and and the things that they do and you sometimes i think probably I can imagine that you need a little kind of wake up that like, I need to value this person more. I need to get out of this taken from for granted. I, and, uh, and I think that's what happens with their relationship, which is really cute, you know, and he realizes how, how beautiful she is and just what, uh, what he'd been kind of taking for granted. So I like that. Yeah. And for me, that's one of my, it it reflects one of my favorite topics that I talk about in class. And I do cover a lot on my friendship podcast and that's relationship maintenance, right? And sometimes Mm -hmm. we do get in ruts and that's life. Like if you just think about think about the last year and I'm thinking about people who are married and who have kids and have had to work or in homeschool or like monitor schooling from home and the kids are all home and just like, how do you ever find time for yourself when we were in lockdown or this, that, or the other thing, and that it just is like a stressful time. Mm -hmm. And okay, that's a unique time. None of us really, I think, ever prepared for what the last 18 months or so brought us. But even pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and hopefully in the future post-pandemic, what you see is that a lot of times people don't put in the time to maintain their relationships. And so so it's like... uh, I'm not saying relationships are like cars, but there is a metaphor here. And I can guarantee Mm -hmm. if you don't ever change your oil, there's going to be something real wrong with your car. I don't know exactly what, but there's going to be something (laughs) real wrong with your car. right? And that's, that's the, the consistent maintenance of a car. You have to have that same mindset with the relationship. And even when you get in a rut, that it's starting to sort of like, is there a reset or is there a way that we can help each other out of the rut? And 
How do we Mm -hmm. maintain our relationship? Because we can't just assume that our relationship will always be exactly what we want it to be or that it'll be status quo. The reason why relationships work is because we work at it. Doesn't Mm -hmm. necessarily mean it should be a job because a job is, sorry, I'm always looking towards retirement. (laughs) (laughs) No, they would need, they need to evolve and grow and change because that's just part of being human. Right. Yeah. And so I think that that's very true. And I, I also think there's something about the kind of manual labor of working together on uh, on a project. I mean, I don't get to do it that often because I most of my work is is uh, more digital work. But um, there's something about that kind of kind of working together on 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 projects like that that is very satisfying and helps bond you together with with people that you're doing it with, you know, that. Yeah. I I mean, that's one of the ways in which to maintain a relationship is sharing tasks. So it's Mm -hmm. like doing the dishes together, but like, and like your point, like they work together. And so that's one of the ways they can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's other ways to do it as well. Yeah. My, my, one of my best friends at college, her name is Raylene and she has, she, she grew up on a farm and now she has her own farm in Ohio nice. and she Raylene. has a great, if you're looking for a great Instagram follow, follow Belvedere uh, farms on, I'll put a link in the description on Instagram. And she, she loves her milk cow and she's always talking about great. And I just watch, I watch her stories and I'm just like exhausted watching. <laughs> like, well, that's the thing. Amazing. I- I, as you might wager a guess, Rachel, <laughs> I have been on a farm to get my own pumpkins. <laughs> I am what, and I didn't even grow up in a big city, but I'm more of like an indoorsy sort of city gal. So, so yeah. I'm like, oh my, oh Just that, the the yeah. amount <laughs> the amount of work to can everything and preserve everything and grow everything and and. Every day, sometimes twice a day, uh, milking the cow, and then then you have it's, all of this milk, and what are you going to do with it? And then you, you, she's making, uh, she's making yogurt and making. I'm always just like I'm transfixed by her. <laughs> Y'all got to check it out. But and I have to say, like I'm totally paying attention to you, but I already found her, and I just hit follow, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't forget. Because although I am not someone who has ever been on a farm knows anything about farms but i do wager a guess that they put in a lot of hard work and so to be able to follow and and see all the cool things that your friend does i'm all about it so already following Rayleigh, (laughs) let's go yes well and uh, he says when something's broken on the farm you have to fix it and i i i think that is very true and it can be sometimes frustrating because I like I have things I'll want to fix it like say if the if my laptop has a problem like oh gosh but sometimes yeah. it's like it's like literally impossible to fix it like it's yeah. you just there's there, the parts aren't there anymore like I miss that kind of day uh, that that our previous generations had where it's like you bought a vacuum it lasted your whole life <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Like ref- like appliances, like I'm a renter, so I always get what they give me and, you know, but like people who purchase and stuff, you know, I, I see a lot of that like in ads or just people talking about, or maybe it's, you know, my parents telling stories, but it's like things aren't, you know, made like they're used to, like a refrigerator would last you your entire life or you would have this thing. And I think that's like a kitchen aid, like a kitchen aid mixer. Like that's, you're not just getting one and going to have to buy another one in two years. Right. But like when, when something breaks, you fix it. My first thought is like, okay, is it something I can fix? And remember two seconds ago when I said I was indoorsy, <laughs> um, I do not know how to fix a lot of things. And I have to say this might be embarrassing, but also hilarious because my bathtub was backed up. So it was filling uh-huh. with water. I used to call <laughs> my landlord and be like, can you help? And then I was like, finally, I was like, I feel like that's annoying. So I looked it up. 
I watched a YouTube mm-hmm. video. I went to the grocery store in town, which is Meyer. if you're a, a Midwest person. I got one of those long little thingamajigs to stick in there, and I unclogged my own bathtub. Uh, I am 43 years old, go. and I unclogged my first bathtub. I fixed it, <laughs> y'all. And so, like, there was some satisfaction yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like, it's amazing to me. You know, it could be based on where we're born, our families, what our families do, just the experiences we have, the journeys we have that – you know, had I been born in a different family, I might be like Mrs. Fix It, but mm-hmm. <laughs> that does <'Cause>, not happen. <laughs> Cause he thinks that she's gonna quit. That she yeah. that he so again, he's the one that's judging her. She doesn't she doesn't ever really judge anybody in this movie. Um, but another thing that I think they do a good job with in the script that's not always there is there's like little moments of humor. Like, mm-hmm. for example, when she refuses the pancakes and just like, can I have a smooth? And Rosie's like, I'll put these in a blender. I was like, I think she means a fruit smoothie. But then I was like, yeah. what is, wait, what does a pancake and fruit smoothie taste like? Was, <laughs> and, but- and another good line, I thought, you know, when she says that, uh, he, he, she says, I'm not afraid of hard work. I've done the warehouse sale at Barney's each spring. I can handle this. <laughs> yeah. And that's so there the were thing. good lines like that, that were funny. Yeah. Absolutely. I liked Harry a lot, too. I thought he was funny and charming. And I thought Jenny was funny. I liked Rosie a lot. Mm-hmm. And like that point of their, like, as they're trying to figure each other out, and the assumption is that she can't do anything. It's a really good point to go back and say, if something is broke, you fix it. And I mm-hmm. joked that I don't know how to fix things. But I can solve a lot of other problems. And yeah. isn't that essentially what fixing it means, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're solving some sort of problem she can figure it out because she's creative in other ways. Right. Right. Yeah, she's like, yeah. tell me about this pumpkin cream and uh, you know, that, that the mm-hmm. grandmother made and tell me about these flowers. Like she's seeing it from a completely different view. Mm-hmm. And that's what's can be so great about um, integrating our lives with people who are unlike us or be- befriending people or working with other people and collaborating because not everyone has the answers. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can solve the same problems, but together Mm -hmm. you can make it happen. And I think that's what Jenny brought to them Mm -hmm. was like this outsider view, but then she needed all of them. Like it wasn't like, okay, well then I'm just going to take over and do it and I don't need you and, and that sort of thing. But yeah, I think that's what she brought was a whole different view. And she pushes them outside of their comfort zone as well. Like things like wanting to do the logo and, and uh, wanting to, you know, promote different products. And and we do get some conflict with the violets uh, that Mm -hmm. uh, he's always just given, given away uh, because they remind him of his wife and, uh, and the obviously Abby's mother and in one point, uh, Jenny accidentally runs over uh, some of the violets and they yeah. get some conflict. And I thought that that was, was well done. And uh, you, you, you can understand, especially when somebody's lost suddenly like that, you know, that, I mean, both, both ways when it's a long goodbye and a short goodbye, both have its challenges, but, um, when a uh, when it's just a sh- you know when it's when you have that element of you're in shock right yeah and it, it people might think oh we well, have to move on but it's it's i mean i've thankfully have not had to deal with anything like that yeah. but i've had friends who have and uh and it's it's hard and everybody has their own timeline and sometimes different items can really be very yeah very meaningful, like, like the violet. So I thought that that was a pretty good conflict. Yeah. And I also Mm -hmm. think like thinking about that conflict, like I can understand why Mm -hmm. he only gives them away. Like he still wants other people to enjoy him, but it's like, he doesn't want to make money off maybe the memory of his wife. But I also would say that at the same time, if you're going to lose your farm or you're going to lose like what you've created together and it's Mm -hmm. not a good situation for you or your daughter, 
that I think that at a certain point you might realize that your wife would be like, do it. I want you to do, you know, share this with people, but also be compensated for your time and love Mm -hmm. and attention to those flowers, into those pumpkins, into that pumpkin cream, right? Like it's, there, there isn't any, we should be compensated for the work we do. Right. And I can see how at some point it could feel like being like problematic, but I don't think there's anything wrong for charging for something no. that is taken labor. <laughs> that was the only thing I was like, sell those flowers. Mister. <laughs> you are going to lose the farm. It's well, especially be with something else, <laughs> especially some. Yeah, especially something that can be replenished. You can yeah. grow more. Exactly. And so it, it just makes sense. And he does apologize. And like you said, yeah. you want characters in your films to grow and, uh, and and change. And I mean, if they lost the farm, he's going to lose all the violets. So yeah. and they're going to go to someone else who doesn't have that memory or that connection and they're going to make bank off your flowers. So you might as well do it because you're the one who's put in the work for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but now the characters have kind of had their conflict. They've grown. And so then we start to get a little bit a little bit more intimacy where you have them on the sharing the horse ride. I, I really yes. like that. That was very cozy. And then, like you said, the kiss in the rain. And Sorry, I she... spoiled that too soon, friends. <laughs> You're allowed to move on. Yeah. And it's the, sometimes it helps if you don't have to do it alone. Oh, So cute. That's so a good cute. line. Yeah, that's a that great good. line. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's always nice when we get a mid-movie kiss, so it's not just the last 30 seconds of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I We were talking about Hallmark movies in my class today, and we were talking about how we want more kisses rather than at the end. And the person mm-hmm. who brought it up is a gentleman in my class who loves Hallmark movies and loves romance movies. And he was like, yeah, why is it always just the kiss at the end? So we were actually talking about that today in my class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that they, they want to keep the anticipation and the tension. Oh, absolutely. Growing. Yeah. But I think that actually it creates more tension because mm-hmm. especially if you're going to do a near kiss, because I don't think that there's much difference between a kiss kiss and a near kiss as far as yeah. like the, the implications for our characters. Like yeah. if I almost kiss somebody versus actually kissing them, I don't think that that's actually that different for our relationship and how we would respond. Right. It would still be kind of like, what are we going to do next? And it's still yeah. be kind of awkward. It's not like, oh, I almost kissed this person. So nothing there, happened. Something happened. There might, but like, you're right. Like there's probably more tension there because the almost mm-hmm. kiss is kind of like, well, when are we going to see the first kiss? Where yeah. it's kind of like the first kiss. It's like, okay, where might the second kiss be? Yeah. There might be more anticipation for that first one. But if you have a mid movie kiss, then yeah. all of a sudden the characters have to deal with it, right? Yeah. So that's true. I think it actually amps up the tension and that they, they, you can't kind of pretend that it's not happening. Mm-hmm. So then what are we yeah. going to do? So I, I, I like it. I think it actually helps build chemistry and it depends on how it's executed, of course. But Absolutely. for the most part, I like it. I also liked the whole little side relationship between brother Perry slash Harry and (laughs) and Valerie. Yes. (laughs) The coffee shop. I thought they were really cute. And I also liked the fact that Rowan Kahn, who plays the plays Harry, that he is like a pretty good singer. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was cute. Their little like flirtatious uh, moments. That was fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I liked it because then, you know, there's the anticipation there. Like, that's what I like when there's a collective cast like this, Mm -hmm. where you're invested in all the characters. Cause I'm like, when is Harry and the coffee girl going to get together? Or is, you know, how's that going to happen? And so I like being invested in multiple characters and, like seeing how mm-hmm. like even like how Harry and Jenny might even connect in the sense of like what mm-hmm. it's you know what she can offer and like they 
she makes that pumpkin cream that goes on people's faces. But Harry and wait, Brett, <laughs> <laughs> they eat it right. Yeah, so it's like that a was so funny, funny moment Which, where, <laughs> like, what are ha- you eating? It goes on people's faces. <laughs> this hand cream, it must not have very much like um. What do they call it? Uh, they, they like the glycerin, you know, that yeah. they use for lotions and stuff, because that stuff tastes terrible. <laughs> like, what is this? I was gonna say, and how do we know this, Rachel? Have you been eating some lotion? <laughs> there must, or there was way too much pumpkin flavor in it, and they did not know what they were eating. But I thought that was really funny. Yeah, was I was really like. Funny. She's like, where did the pumpkin cream go? And like, it was a clever solution to how do they get out of this mess? Like, how yeah. how can they? Uh, That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Jenny brought that to them where they might not have thought about that before. They would have just mm-hmm. used the last of the cream and that would have been it. But mm-hmm. she sort of um, stimulated this search for the recipe and doing more and making mm-hmm. more and then she had a line of people out the door who wanted like facials and things like that. And it just becomes something that it's not, you know, when I think of like a pumpkin farm, I think, you know, my parents came up on Sunday, we went to the local one. I got some apples, apple cider, apple cider donuts, of course. I took some photos. I'll go back for pumpkins. I felt like they'd be gross by the time (laughs) Halloween came around, but like, I do those sorts of things, but if there was, there's other things they might offer as well. Like sometimes you have like jams and things like that, but I like this idea that sort of changing or updating what this farm can do for the community and more, you know, and Mm -hmm. it's going to go beyond and it, it can then become a place that is well known. They will have replenishable flowers and cream and all sorts of good stuff and they're gonna be set for life mm-hmm. plus and also they're millionaires or billionaires like mm-hmm. jenny and her dad were <laughs> at the beginning but you know plus also it's a way that she can bond with abby and yes. also keep the kind of memory of the of abby's mom mm-hmm. uh, alive in such a positive way which helps helps brett to heal more so that that there's there's a nice like heart to this film like i said it has the humor the funny banter it it, it, and then it also has this sweetness to it which is what you want in this kind of movie yeah and i think the added sweetness is that you know in their time together uh jenny discovers they used to have like a harvest moon celebration and he didn't want to do it anymore because of like the the memories that are brought up and Mm -hmm. they name sort of the the pumpkin cream harvest moon or the company is called harvest moon hence the name in the movie people (laughs) and and i i I liked that as well right Mm -hmm. like it didn't indicate exactly how that decision was made but I'm going to wager a guess that it, that Jenny had that idea and that that was something really special that meant something a lot to that family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you have this, this uh, barn dance that they're yes. doing to help uh, somebody and uh, you get a little bit of line dancing, which is kind of fun. And- <laughs> I thought that was the electric slide. I was confused. I was like, is that also it's- country dancing? <laughs> I think it was like a two-step kind of a you know oh, okay. line dance kind I was of a like, thing. I feel like I've done those same things, and I went to like a city school, but it wasn't, we didn't. It wasn't to country music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so then Brooke overhears the the girls talking about how they didn't like her at first, and they were making things really hard for her. And I do, I mean, you kind of have to just go with it because they only have so much time to have conflict in this yeah. story. But it it does, it is frustrating when, you know, a simple kind of discussion I think could re- resolve this, but yeah. she's so offended and so upset. And uh, you do get, I think that Lila does some good little acting mm-hmm. in this scene as I uh that uh, i don't think i ever want to grow up and she has that drawing that she made of them as a family <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. i wish you didn't have to go 
And Less then Rose, Abby, I don't want to grow up either. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And Rosie says, give him a chance to explain. And I'm like, yes, that's correct. Give him a chance. Like things have obviously grown and changed. And so, you know, but like I said, you only have so much time. I understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, he says, you became part of our lives. And so she goes away for a little bit, but then Brooke tells her that there's a special mineral in the pumpkins at at the farm for the cream and uh, and it changes everything. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. And they end off with the Harvest Moon Festival and the new name is Jarrett Beauty. <laughs> the new oh, name that's of the, the name. company. Yeah, because the last I thought name. I was like, I couldn't remember, but the like the cream or something was called Harvest Moon. Yes, and inside every city girl is a little bit of country. Mm. <laughs> we shall <I> agree. see. <laughs> well, I don't you know. I, agree. I mean, I'm I'm a suburb slash. I did grow up in a small town, Middletown, yeah. Maryland. Uh, <laughs> so. Here's the thing: I don't live in a, a like I live in a town now, and I grew up in a city. And mm-hmm. I can tell you that when I take Finn out for a, like when he has to use the bathroom. And it's like raining that I'm like, come on, hurry up, buddy. Like, I'm like, I'm going to melt. Like, I'm like a witch. I'm melting. <laughs> so, so the country girl in me might be buried very deep, but I'm sure mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it might be able to be pulled out. <laughs> yeah. I think if you give country music a shot, there yeah. is a great tradition of, of storytelling in country mm-hmm. music that yeah. I don't think that any other music is quite... Mm. like it for yeah. the the stories that it tells and you know, there's i mean obviously there's lots of garbage but there's <laughs> really good stuff too yeah. so always <laughs> a critic no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i can't there's I kid. <laughs> lots of really good uh music and even if it's not like hardcore country if it's like yeah. something like taylor swift or or something like that it's still definitely part of uh the kind of america's gift to the world is yeah is country music i mean it started here it's you know it's a a tradition here and uh it's i really enjoy it but i'm a uh, dolly parton girl so oh yeah right (laughs) yeah so good she's great i mean i love her we're not only she an excellent human which she absolutely is but she is an incredible songwriter. She yeah. has beautiful songs in music. And a lot of people don't even realize that certain songs that yeah. they like are actually like, I will always love you and things like that are, yeah. are actually Dolly Parton songs. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's my country. Dolly Parton. Yeah. She's the best. <laughs> I'll take uh, other <laughs> uh, suggestions because if you want to see the city girl go a little country, feel free to give us suggestions. On, yes. Put uh, in the Twitter. comment section. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, Reba is incredible. She's oh, amazing. I love that show. Does that uh-huh. count? <laughs> yeah, so good. And she's going to be in a Lifetime movie this Christmas. Very exciting. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so we also see that Abby is now the pumpkin princess, which is super cute. Like she that had also wanted. Been gone. Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd been gone away. And then brett proposes at the end which is super swoon worthy and she of course accepts and you don't always get the proposal yeah they don't always do an epilogue kind of like they do here but it's nice when they do i like it it's yeah. fun then mm-hmm. then you don't have to like but what if like what's gonna happen you you kind of have a better idea but i still like that even if it's like they he proposed and stuff, she describes him as like her best friend, and I'm like, yeah, that's so cool, love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really cute. So I really enjoy this movie. Like it, it's one of my favorite Fall Harvest movies. I I think I probably my favorite is still that one we did with Ashley Williams, October yeah. Kiss. I was gonna say, wait, is this my second Harvest movie I've seen? So I've seen, I've seen two. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need to see more to really sort of be able to rank them. But yeah, I've I don't enjoyed think, both. I don't think we've done any other ones. Well, I do enjoy because it, mm-hmm. there's like the twist where it's like a different. You know, in terms of like their the Christmas that there's like a different holiday, which I like that, or at least like the fall like type stuff. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So, and I did like that. This is the pumpkin farm. Enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of that Christmas movie we reviewed several years ago where they go on that tour, like that trip across country and they have a road to Christmas also with Jesse Schramm. What? Are you kidding me? (laughs) Like, I don't even know the name of it. I don't know what year (laughs) I watched it, but I remember that movie and I enjoyed it. Yeah, she, she's that great. was her. Yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> and she, birthday wish. Remember birthday wish? Jesse, you're great. Yeah, she's really good. <laughs> this is why you have me on, right? Because I'm like, that's the same person. <laughs> Everyone at home's like, yes, Elisa, it is. <laughs> yeah, she's so, fabulous. <laughs> what would you give this uh, movie one to five crowns? I would probably say like 4.3, 4.4. Overall enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say 4.5. So I'm right Mm -hmm. around the same as you. I think it's really solid. It's a funny script. Mm -hmm. It's, they've got good chemistry. It's got lots Mm -hmm. of good supporting characters who have their own arcs and relationships. I mean, for the time allotted, I just don't know how you could really make it that much better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the collective. I think that, like I said at the beginning, one thing that Mm, sort of takes me out of the story is a little bit, it's just that he seems a little, and they all seem a little too clean cut. Not saying that people who are- Do you like a little beard? Like, yeah, I'm like, maybe you don't shave every single day, Derek or Brett or what. I still don't know what his name is. (laughs) Yeah. Well, very so, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let us know what you think of Harvest Moon in the comments section. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And Elisa, how can people find you? Yes, I am friends with Elisa nearly everywhere. Uh, Twitter, it's friends w Elisa, and then Instagram, Facebook, Gmail, TikTok, web is all friends with Elisa. And then my personal Twitter, which I often talk about TV and, and stuff like this, is Dr. Elisa Lucas at twitter.com. Very good. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Got lots of reviews going to be coming up. And I'm going to be going uh, to the New York Film Festival, just only seeing two movies, but Ooh, I'm excited about it. And I'm doing it. Exciting. Big. Yeah, and I'm going to be also seeing some Broadway shows. It's going to be super fun next week. Uh, so make sure you're following all of my content and you can check out all of that. I think you'll really enjoy it. And uh, also make sure you're following the podcast to Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast all over social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. It helps people to be able to find the podcast, both of our mm-hmm. podcasts, if there's reviews. So if you haven't done it, it only takes a few seconds and it really helps us a lot to have those five star reviews. And then also, if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We have our a uh, merch store, which has some fun Hallmark inspired mm-hmm. designs and more coming. And then we also have our patron group, which we appreciate that support so much. It's only $2 a month to start out or more. We appreciate all the uh, contributors that we have so, 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 so much. So please take a look at that. We have some cool perks, some cool benefits. We have a really great watch along coming up this month. So check it out. You'll you won't regret it. It's really good. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much, Elisa. I really appreciate it. And always. uh, (laughs) Bye everyone. Bye.